If you guys didn't already know, I am doing a giveaway. All you have to do to join is subscribe to this channel, turn your post notifications on, give a like to this video, and leave a comment down below saying I want to win the giveaway. Hey yo, what's good? It's your boy, Sneakers. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Randy, and I cover fashion content everywhere from designer to streetwear or streetwear to designer and everything in between so make sure to subscribe and turn your post notifications on because you don't want to miss out on any future videos anyways today well really it was yesterday i received a package from ups guy came from nike though and this package was freaking expensive so originally the price was 720 i know the thumbnail says 750 i just kind of averaged it it's a terrible average because 760 and 720 the average between that's not really 750 but i decided to round up the retail price was 720 after tax and shipping it was 760 and that was a hefty price there this is the size of the box right oh, yeah it's from nike obviously you guys can see if you guys can already guess leave a comment down below what you guys think the sneaker is it's pretty easy it's like one of the biggest boxes that nike delivers to well general release i guess now this used to be a limited shoe and now it's uh pretty easy to get you can go on their website and cop it anyways without further ado let's go ahead and show you the sneaker as you guys can see here this is the box and of course inside are the nike hyper adapt 1.0 i thought the box was gonna be a lot bigger because the shipping box was literally double its size and it had so much of the air packaging that you get when you buy sneakers from nike and whoa what is that oh that's the receipt here authenticity so you don't think it's fake but i buy fake expensive shoes i don't let's start off with the box we do have a pretty freaking big box it's literally the size of my whole torso and on top we have another nike logo on the side we have a nike logo on this side we have a nike logo and on the front we have the size tag on the upper left corner this time though. Usually it's on the bottom left corner. And here it says Nike Hyper Adapt 1. Price 720, as you guys can see right there. Freaking expensive. I did buy a size 8 because that's my size, but I heard you weren't supposed to go with your size. I heard you're supposed to go like half a size up or down, but I don't listen to people. I just went with my size. And the way you open this box is it has these tabs right here. You slide them out just like that. And then you insert your finger in the hole and you pull out. So just slide all the way out and for now, we don't need that. So here it is. This is what you see when you open up the box. You have this blue thing here, just blue cardboard. Inside here, I'm guessing is a charger. And you do have regular ass wrapping paper. I would not expect that. I thought for $720, I'd be getting a lot more than that. And here they are, these babies. I'm not gonna lie, I already opened it once and I checked them out. That's why they're not in the box. So I'm not that impressed by them anymore. <laughs> but I'm still gonna do the review for you guys because obviously this is what you guys wanna see unless you guys have already seen videos in the past. So here we have the sneaker. We have an upper full of some type of knit, which is pretty thick and it has to be to cover all the electrical parts of the shoe because remember, sneakers, you do wear them, you go outside and there's times when it rains and rain and electricity, you guys know those are not a good match. Like right now it's pouring. I cannot even wear these shoes out right now. So I'm kind of screwed. I kind of just have these for show right now, to be honest. So on the upper, we do have that thick material, which I'm guessing is just stitching that's really thick. And then we have embroidery Nike logo right there. It's a swoosh. And if we go to the back, we have like a plastic heel counter and then we have a pull tab made out of like, I don't even know, some cloth, some weird cloth. This shoe's too futuristic for me, bro. I don't even know the materials on this either. We do have a tongue with like this new buck right here. Well, actually feels really nice, really smooth. And then the Nike swoosh logo is like embossed, debossed right there because it's like embossed and then it's like debossed, but it doesn't stick out more than it's supposed to. And they did paint it with this light blue color, which does match this part of the sneaker right here, which I don't even know what to call it. I'm gonna guess that's the battery or the motor. I'm gonna call it the motor, okay? And then if we go to the lacing system, which obviously it's unique to itself because there's no other sneaker like this. It is like a metal frame, but it's like a metal mesh. So when you tighten the sneaker, it compresses, but it doesn't mess it up. And when you expand it, it expands by itself, of course, because it's metal, it's gonna go back to its original shape. And you can actually see the wires of the lacing system. You can see them right there. If I move that over a little bit more, you can see it right over there. Barely on camera, but in person, you see it a lot better. It's kind of just really hard to show you guys. Going out to the midsole, we do have a rubber midsole, which is a really, really, really stiff rubber midsole, which is why you probably heard a lot of people say, these are mad uncomfortable. I don't know, I never really like walked in them like that. I kind of just tried them on, but I can already see it. Like this is not going to be a comfortable shoe because how hard this is and it's so thick too. And then right here, like I said, we have the motor. This lights up obviously like you guys have seen in pictures. I know you guys have seen pictures of the sneakers already been out for a year and a half and I'm just not getting my hands on these because of the restock that happened like last week. Going out to the outsole, we have the zigzag pattern, which is pretty trash. It's just really plain, yo. I don't, I would not expect this sneaker to cost $720. 
and be this plain. Nike's robbing you on this, guys. Nike's robbing you on this, for real. The only thing you're really paying $720 for is the technology and pretty much the ideas that everybody put into and they, they gotta pay them back for all those ideas, you know? It's a business, okay? Nike is a huge business. What amazed me the most about this sneaker is what's inside. I would think they would put some more thought into this, some more detail, something. For $720, 760 after tax, but who's counting? This is what's inside the sneaker. They couldn't put a piece of cardboard. Jordans come with cardboard. They don't even come with paper no more. Who, who uses this? Oh, I almost made it. Almost saw it, right? I think I saw that. Jordan 11s are $500 cheaper and they come with a hard plastic shoe tree, I guess you want to call it. It's not exactly a shoe tree, but we'll call it a shoe tree for now. I wonder how the Nike mags came. That's, a, that's what I got to get in my hands. So going on to the insole, oh my God. We have a brick. This is thick as hell. So we have the Earl right there, which stands for uh, Electro Adaptive Reactive Lacing. Who really cares about that? We just care about the sneaker, right? Inside right here, we have the size tag. It says MS8. Um, this just means a size eight. And then right here, you could feel, you could feel the motor. That's why they put this really thick insole so you don't step on the motor and mess it up or whatever reason. It's just really thick. And the problem with thick insoles, they are usually uncomfortable, especially made out of this material, whatever it is. So let's just go ahead and get into what you guys wanna see. You guys wanna see this thing lace itself. If we try to open it more than it already is, the light turns yellow, which you see it right there. It means it's maxed open and just, it can't do anything. The shoe's incapable of doing what it wants to do. If we push the Titan button, which is the top one, or it looks like a fast forward button. We get that noise that you hear from every video and you also are gonna see the light turn blue. I'll show you guys the light after, I just wanna show you guys how it laces first. Oh, that was pretty cool. I remember when I first did it, I was freaking amazed. I was like, no way. If you hold this for two seconds, it goes back by itself, look. All right, why are you not working? You see? It went back by itself, it's pretty cool. Even though I don't know why you would need that. There's no point in even tightening it without having your foot in there. You know what I'm saying? Even though it tightens by itself. What am I saying, yo? <laughs> I'm not even making sense right now. Where's the button? I hate, this button's not even like located right where it's, oh. Oh, I got you. It's mo it moved down a little, the, mo the button moved down a little bit more than where those arrows are. It moved down like this way, so I gotta push a little bit below it to get it right. So let's go ahead and tighten it again one more time. No, let's try it again now. Cause apparently I couldn't find the damn button. It was it's way off. No, I don't know what I did. Screw. You guys saw that and you heard it too. It means the motor is straining itself, which it should have stopped, but it pretty much tightened the shoe all the way. That's pretty cool though. That's pretty cool. Especially the concept of when you put it on your foot. It's pretty dope. And I'm gonna show you guys a video of my mom putting it on. Wait, 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 and one more time before we get to the long feet. Let me show you guys how it unlaces itself. Stops. Oh, there it goes. Uh oh. Was it broken? It's not. Oh, okay, okay. Oof, I got scared, y'all. I thought I broke it. Do I pay for them? Come on. Get some technical dude. There's no way your foot doesn't. It has to fit. Your foot's smaller than mine. Now stand up. What are you doing? There's a heel tab for a reason. It's inside. When you take them off, you gotta push this button right here. Inside the box also comes this blue box, like I said. It has a Nike logo on it, and the box just lifts up from the back. And there you have your two chargers, which they go on the sneaker. All you do is put it on right here. It's a magnet, it sticks, you plug it into the wall, and it's gonna charge, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna light up. And that's pretty much it for whatever's in this box. Also comes, it doesn't even come with an instruction manual. It tells you, please visit nike.com forward slash hyperadapt for more information, including the manual. And then you have to download it, so. It's a little bit more difficult than what you think it is. My final thoughts on this sneaker, it's bulky. It kind of does go with the new trend of the dad shoes. But it's just not aesthetically pleasing to me, at least. I don't like it. My sister said she liked it. My mom said she liked it. I don't like it. I just don't like it. For some reason, it just doesn't look good to me. I think it's this part right here. It looks like there's like the chunk of the midsole's missing. I feel like if that was there, it would be perfectly fine. Like, I don't care about this light. We don't need it to see that. It has one job, and it's to lace itself. And they still charge you $760 for that. When this sneaker in reality probably cost them $100 max. And that's pushing it way over the limit. I'm just saying that to be safe. So if you guys were to ask me, should I buy this sneaker? 
I would say no and I would wait until the 2.0 because maybe the 2.0 might look a little bit nicer than this sneaker. But if you're fine with the aesthetics of this sneaker, then go on the website, add the cart, check out, and be satisfied with your purchase. But I'm gonna warn you, the sneaker's not comfortable. It makes you a little bit taller. For me, it'd be great, but it's not aesthetically pleasing, honestly. I don't think the lacing system is worth $720. I think I would pay the $700 more for those 40 sneakers than I would for this. Like not even the 40 Ultra Boost cost that much, I don't think, which I would probably buy those before I buy these because this is going right back to the Nike store. So by the time you guys are watching this video, I'll most likely have those $760 right back in my bank account. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and also make sure to subscribe and join Join the team, bro. I don't know, like I said, I don't have a name for you guys. So join the team. I wanna ask you guys though, what do you guys think about this sneaker? Do you guys like the aesthetics of it? Cause I personally don't, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you guys like the colors? I mean, there's a bunch of colorways now, so color doesn't matter. Just what do you guys think about the structure and the materials and everything? Pretty, like I said, the aesthetics of it. That's what the aesthetics means. That's what I mean, at least when I say it. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you guys like it? Do you guys think the price is too high? Cause I think 720 is dumb high for this. To end it on a good note, the sneaker is pretty lightweight for the motor that I had in there. So I'll give it that, but the sneaker's ugly, it's plain, the details are trash, and I'm pretty sure you guys think the same. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree. Today's fan of the day does go to Tate My Berg. If you want to be fan of the day, all you gotta do is subscribe to this channel and also make sure to turn your post notifications on and also leave a positive comment down below. Anyways, guys, until next time, make sure you guys keep grinding. It's your boy, Sneaker Signing out. Thank you.